Hey groups, it is good to be with you guys again today. Um, over the last few weeks, um, the last two weeks, we've talked about international missions with Kristen. Um, and I'm so excited to see how uh, we as a group community can get more involved with international missions. And I hope you guys were able to have some conversations about maybe what would it look like for your group to go on a mission trip together uh, internationally. Um, I think there are some really cool opportunities there. So I um, be praying and thinking about if that is a good option for you guys. Uh, but we also wanted to give you um, some information about what we have missionally locally, uh, some of the options out there. So Kristen, uh, can you kind of tell us what we have, uh, what the Foundry is supporting as far as local missions? For sure. Yes, we do have right now two local missions that we do support on a regular basis. One of those is Doors of Hope. Um, they help out people who are just kind of in a tough situation and allow them to get the help that they need in various areas. We also support Upward Bound Ministries, which a lot of you know probably is Zero Gravity. That's the elementary program, but there's also one way, which is the middle school Bible study that they're able to do. We also have a couple other missions that we support um, on one-time basis. We do Harvest Stand Ministries with our micro pantry right outside of our church. And also, um, I know groups right now are in a competition to get um, some Thanksgiving meal baskets for yes. Harvest Stand Ministries. Excited to see that. Um, we have Hand to Hand, which we've learned about before. And um, we also have um, one other one, and it is Compassionate Heart. For those of you that come on a Monday night, Compassionate Heart, we do have volunteers from Compassionate Heart that are come and help us out in our Monday night services. Absolutely. So how can groups specifically get involved in some of these things? For sure. There's lots of different ways and for definitely reach out to you yeah. um, at the end of this, but just some highlights. Um, we do need some snack packs for hand to hand. If you are willing with your group to put together some snack packs once a week, those kids take those yeah. home. Um, we do have our Thanksgiving meal basket. Um, hopefully I'm seeing right now that yes. the biggest one is 10. Curious if any groups can get above yeah. that. And um, we do have some some individual needs also for Zero Gravity and Upward Bound Ministries, anything from breakfast for the Bible study and snacks to people actually going in and volunteering and helping out with the kids. Absolutely. Um, so there's so many opportunities, just way too many to list right now. Absolutely. And I'd love to be able to connect up with you guys on ways that you guys can get involved. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of great opportunities um, locally here. Uh, I, I'm really excited about Doors of Hope yes. because that gives us way more options than we had in the past. Um, there's people who need help fixing a deck. So if you got a group who um, the guys want to work with their hands and do some of those things, I, as you can see, don't <laughs> do that very much. I don't know how to work on a deck, but we need people who do. Yeah. Um, so whether it's from doing snack packs with your whole group and incorporating the kids or rebuilding a deck or helping on a roof, um, or helping with these, these Thanksgiving baskets. There, there are so many options. So I, w I really want to challenge our groups to live into this local mission, these opportunities. So if there's something that rang true in your ears, um, have a conversation with your group right now about what it means for your group to serve together. Uh, because we do want to challenge our groups into this next scene season as not only having conversations about the Word of God and how to challenge each other, but to live into the mission of what God has called us to do. And we believe that is with serving together. So, so excited to hear what you guys are doing. Again, if you have any questions, reach out to me at matt.kuman at foundrychurch.net. Um, and me and Kristen will be in touch about what that looks like uh, to serve together in our group. So, so excited to see once where these opportunities go. Um, but let's dive right into groups content. So over the course of this weekend, the message was this idea of empty promises, right? And I think about my own life and how often um, I have said promises or said words that I've never been able to fulfill. Um, I think of an instance, actually, uh, before McKenna was born, I promised my wife, uh, we moved into a house uh two Julys, I think a year and a half ago. Um, and I promised my wife that I would have uh, grass planted before McKenna was born. And my excuse has been, uh, McKenna came three weeks early, so we, we weren't able to get that in time. Um, but I still don't have the whole yard planted yet. And she's like a year and three months now at this point. So I am working on that. But uh, what happens when we have words, when we have empty words, people don't 
rely on us anymore, right? He, uh, Eric had a few examples of what this looks like. Like we would not go to a hairdresser that has bad hair, right? You look at a hairdresser and be like, I don't even feel comfortable with what's on your head, let alone you telling me what to do with mine. Or a trainer who is out of shape, right? You won't go to a trainer who is out of shape. You want someone who is fit and um, doing the things that you are doing. Uh, They not only talk the talk, but they walk the walk, right? They are doing these very things that they are doing. Um, So, Uh, We focused on James 3, verse 13. It says this, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Um, And as a group, I'm so excited to have some of these conversations about how do we not just have empty words? As Christians, what does it mean for us to mean what we say and actually live that life? So um, kids, there are some questions for you to talk about on the bottom of that page. Leaders, go ahead and walk them through that at this point. And then adults, um, we're going to have some questions for you. All right, groups, question number one. Um, We're looking back into uh, this past week, what you had conversations on, and this is a question. Where did you struggle in the challenge from last week about not cursing others? Question number two. Has there been a time in your life um, where you have been promised something and that promise was broken? Um, If there is, what, what did that do to the relationship? Question number three. Um, when has there been a time that you broke a promise? Um, and a follow-up question to that are, why did you break that promise? And what effects did it have on the people around you? Proverbs 14 verse 23 says, all hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. Um, How many times have you told yourselves um, that this year I am going to lose the extra weight or I'm going to start working out this year. I'm going to eat healthier. I am going to watch less TV. Um, When you read this proverb, uh, what does it tell you? Question number five, in what areas of your life do you struggle with mere talk? Um, And why was it mere talk? Why weren't you able to get some of those things done? Proverbs 29 verse 19 said, words alone will not discipline a servant. The words may be understood, but they are not heeded. Um, Question in this is, who do you have influence over? Remember Eric's words from this weekend, talking at them, so talking at people won't yield, yield positive results. Be specific. What actions can you add into talking with the people that you have influence over? And for number seven, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, I want someone to pull up their phone and type in the song Waymaker. Waymaker. Uh, you have probably heard this in church. We play it um, periodically. Um, but the chorus speaks to who God is. Um, and maybe ask yourself as the song is going on, what does this song show you about who God is?
James 3 verse 13 says this, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by good deeds, or by deeds done in the humility that comes from salvation. Um, your challenge for this week is to remove yourself from speaking promises. I'm talking all promises, even good promises that you are sure you're going to be able to do. Remove yourself from those. Don't allow your words to become empty under any circumstances. Your words have power if people can rely on the things you have to say. Uh, groups, it has been good again this week. If you've got some time and want to dive into the digging deeper section, check out um, that. Uh, we talk about the denial of Peter and the words that he had uh, towards Jesus that were empty. Um, and I think it speaks real volume to how Jesus responded in that situation. So check that out if you've got time. Otherwise, it has been so good to see you guys again. Uh, have a great week.